All right, test, test, one, two, one, two, test, test, one, two, one, two, test, test, one, two, one, two. Play some of this K-pop background music. Gotta love how over the top and corny it is. Gonna listen to my monitor speaker. So welcome back. We are back with more Hero and Maru uh, commentary, analyses, breakdown, philosophical discussion. Because I love these two players so much for completely different reasons. I mean, Hero's my guy, but I've really come to love and appreciate Maru. And they always play super entertaining games together. Everyone says it. The commentators, the casters uh, say it literally all the time. Um, and, uh, this is a, a, a uh, a, well, first of all, before we get into the details, and then we're going to jump into watching the five games from the seven game series, which, spoiler alert, Hero wins, but they're close and super exciting for completely different reasons. Um, I have to thank all of you for watching all my YouTube videos. People weren't particularly interested in Rainer vs. Morrow because I released it shortly before Rainer vs. Morrow in the Summer Masters uh, in Sweden last week or the week before, whenever it was. Uh, but you guys have also given a ton of support to my full five part Hero vs. Morrow um, semi finals match from Atlanta Dreamhack. Uh, ESL last year uh, and Hero's best year ever uh, either shortly before what we're about to watch or shortly thereafter because the Global StarCraft 2 League, the Korean Global League, uh, which I would argue is at least on par with the main Global Leagues in, in some ways is more difficult and more interesting. We'll get into this because we're going to be watching two of the great English announcers broadcasters are Tosis and Tasteless, known as Taste Tostas. Uh, Tasteless, of course, the brother of Day9, another famous caster and, you know, professional nerd, uh, and a diff slightly different part of the thing. But anyways, um, I, I absolutely adore that Marvel's Hero series uh, in, um, in Atlanta. Uh, and then a hero went on to uh, play a seven game series in the finals against Bunny, who has uh, actually older than Mara, slightly younger than Hero, but has evolved and grown slowly um, and is now very competitive. It makes all the tournaments. And Hero went down three to one in the finals in Atlanta and came back to win four to three. And I still plan on doing that series. Uh, but. Players like Bunny and Ty and Byun, uh, I love watching the great Korean Terrans, but if I can only do so many vi uh, videos, excuse me, I'm going to do Maro, uh, and if I'm going to do Protoss, it's going to be Hero. Uh, and the fact that these guys are, are v uh, very clearly buddies, or at least friendly off-court, as they say, makes no difference, because it's extremely competitive. Um, and I, I definitely want to show you some of the fireworks. Uh, I mean, it, it puts the absolute, like the Super Bowl to shame in terms of production value and the hype. And the hosts are constantly trying to get the players to talk crap about each other. And the players are pretty good about going along with it and so forth. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but yeah, it's, uh, you know, the Korean League is very competitive when they're playing, but most of them are either friends off, off a stage or even live in the same house because that's apparently what happens when you join a big Korean team like DKZ or Jenner or whatever, is you literally live in the same house and practice all day uh, with the people. These glasses are getting in the way. I don't know if I'm going to be able to see as well. Um, uh, with people that you're competing against, but also that are helping you compete better. 
Um, so thank you guys again for supporting all the videos. Getting thousands and thousands of hits over the last month or two has been great. Um, but, uh, just seeing when this starts, I think we should jump into the, um, fireworks. I'll let you watch some of the opening and then we're going to jump into the games. Um, and, and while I still want to do analyses of maybe some of them, which I, I've seen this numerous times, uh, although it's been at least a couple weeks, but I know pretty well. Uh, but there's always tons of stuff that surprises me. Um, and they're working so fast that you have to go back sometimes. But I'm going to try and get through each game on its own. Uh, and then if we have to rewind... Uh, uh, and hone in on a few things, we'll do it, uh, but we'll try and get through the games. It's actually not that long, because not only does Hero, spoiler alert, win 4-1 to one against Morrow, but as most Hero games go, they're fairly short, because he's so, so, so aggressive and good in the early game. Alright, here we go. I think we're almost there. 2, 1, alright. I'm gonna mute myself for a sec. You guys can watch this. Okay, I'm totally saving some of these pictures because they're so freaking cute. I actually love that these guys are friends off the, the court or away from the computer or whatever because it doesn't affect their competitiveness when they play whatsoever. But Hero's friends with everyone. He's the biggest sweetheart. It's... And, and Mara being, you know, LeBron, Michael Jordan, Babe Ruth, Wayne Gretzky level uh, is extremely humble, except when he's asked to, uh, he's act to act, asked to act uh, like he's talking a big game, as we'll see in a bit. It's totally a front. And, and all of his teammates, and even his non-teammates, especially from Korea, love him. The hot six thing I gotta look more into. It's some sort of energy drink. But <laughs> Hero pops him when he wins one. I don't know what the hell they're drinking. All right, guys. So the actual games uh, begin around 36 or 37 minutes, which I will put in the copy. But it's really worth watching the long, uh, high production intros to this stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna let you enjoy it, and then we'll uh, we'll be here for the games in about 20 minutes or so, maybe sooner if I fast forward through some of this stuff. But they have the same people, her, and the, a couple male hosts every single time. So, enjoy Korean culture. It's fantastic. Two better competitors to duke it out to become a champion. Artosis, how you doing, man? Oh, dude, I legitimately, 
I'm more excited for this finals than I have been in years. Like in years, and I'm not I'm not exactly sure why, but it's a great storyline. It's amazing to have Hero back from the military. Are we gonna have a Protoss champion for the first time in five years? Or is Maru going to win his fifth GSO Codas title? Either way, it's an amazing victory. Either way, history is going to be made here. Um, it has been such a journey to get to this finals, and it's not the usual Zerg suspects that are occupying one of the two spots to compete to become the GSL Codas champion. No Dark, no Rogue this time. That's right, that's right, and they, they win so many championships. Uh, it's amazing to have this TVP finals. Very excited about it. You can see there our Protoss. Well, I, I don't even know what to call him. He's the best Protoss in the world right now, though. He is changing sure. the whole metagame. He is out of the military. He's got the whole future ahead of him, and he's playing like a beast. It's important to remember that in the past, uh, in the early decade of esports, uh, a lot of people said that it was basically impossible to be a professional gamer post-military. Mm -hmm. This is a perfect example of somebody who's proving that wrong now. Well, as we just saw, he's the first player to get to the finals after the military, so right. amazingly done. And of course, I mean, Maru has every single record that GSL holds. Uh, you can see he's even passed Sue at this point for overall GSL finals. Of course, he's won four of those. So there is a possibility that tonight he wins his fifth GSL Codes. And yes, MVP won five GSL branded tournaments, but this is five Codes, which is much more impressive than what MVP uh, did. One of the most decorated StarCraft players of all time, Maru. If he wins here, winning at the fifth GSL, we have a special G5L trophy uh, that he will be earning. Uh, it's going to be a hell of a night, man. It really is. And you can see the viewers have predicted Maru to win. I don't think it'll be quite so simple as we saw in the rock, paper, scissors that we opened the show <laughs> yeah. with. Hero was able to take that, even telling Maru when he was going all in. Yes. Uh, so the fact that that is what we saw, like, I mean, that, if that isn't PVT in a nutshell, Jesus, I don't know what is. Dude, it's, uh, and keep in mind, Hero won that rock, paper, scissors bout yeah. that they had back there. Uh, by the way, guys, those of you in the audience, so good to have you down here. Uh, we're almost entirely filled up. I know tickets did sell out. We still have a few people filing it now. Um, but man, what a great time to have a live audience. Oh, yeah. It, I can't believe the excitement that was around, like, in the lobby of this building that was out just outside. I was outside grabbing some posters and stuff for my kids to color. And uh, it's amazing. There's so many people here. They're super uh, hyped, super pumped. It's going to be an amazing night. All right, guys, let's get the GSL Season 2 Code S Finals underway. We're going to be bringing out our two players now. Pastor Park on the floor, hyping the audience. This could not, again, be a better finals, a more interesting one. No Zerg, either a, uh, the first GSL Protoss champion in five years. Think of how long that is. Many esports don't even survive for five years. If Mara wins, the fifth GSL Code S champion. It's going to be an amazing night here. And we are just about ready to bring them out. Here we go.
Hero, our first player to come out. He has reinvented the Protoss race, a race that struggled for some time to find its footing. Uh, but he has reinvented the way that we understand this. When going up against Zerg, taking a much more aggro style, a similar unit comp, out expanding. Here against Terran, whatever could possibly change the meta, it's gonna happen tonight. That's right, and while he doesn't have a GSL championship under his belt, he's been on final stages before. I don't think he's gonna falter. The greatest Terran player in the world coming out to set a new record. Maru, uh, if he does what he might do tonight, no one has ever topped this in the past 12 plus years of StarCraft II. And it is just amazing to see because he is miles ahead of every other Terran. It literally isn't even close. He's a whole race unto himself and he's gonna show us why here tonight. We're moments away from getting this best of seven started here. Artosis, your predictions before we get going. Oh my god. I actually don't know, Tasteless. <laughs> I wasn't ready for this question. I'm gonna go with Hero 4-3. Hero 4-3? I'm thinking Maro 4-3, but it could go either way. I'm happy to be wrong. Again, uh, what an insane night it is. So good to have you guys here in the audience. We're going to be bringing Caster Park out here. Andy, go ahead and translate away. The two finalists of GSL Season 2. This stage, this final stage that you earned so much for. The hero. In an offline stage. And every time you face Maru, you always lose every single time. You have done this nine times so far against Maru. But today, will be different. Will you be able to dominate Maru today and become the GSL Season 2 champion? Well, like you said, According to the statistics, you know, Maru's my nemesis. I've never been able to defeat him. But it hasn't been a best of seven so far. But in a best of seven, I'm very confident. And I have made thorough preparation. I have a good chance of winning today. And you said this before, Hero. You said that Maru has too many GSL badges on his uniform. If you're able to take the win of him, he will be a runner-up once again. Are you ready to pull this off? I see Maru today, and he has so many GSL badges on his uniform. It's so cool to watch. I'm going to, um, I'm going to refrain him from getting his fifth GSL badge. So Maru, you have been able to win GSL four times so far. And G5 achieve achievement is one step away. And you know, we've been watching you for the past three years and you were not able to achieve the G5 L so far. But today, if you beat Hero tonight, and then you will be able to achieve G5 L, which is a historical feat in GSL. But Maru, you need to be aware as Hero is looking so dominant right now in GSL. So Maru, are you once again gonna become a runner-up today? Oh. I don't really care that much, but I did win 4 GSL so far. Today, I do really want to win. Then why is it that you want to win today, Maru, against Hero? I mean, because um, every single time I, I won against Hero, I will not lose today against him. That's right, from 2017, uh, you played against Hero in a best of series, you were never beaten by him. So what was the motivation behind that? No, I didn't really care uh, care that much when I played so play, play against Hero. I was pretty nonchalant. Wow, Hero. Maru doesn't care about you, Hero. You're like the last hope of Protoss. But yet, Maru doesn't care anything about you. The Hero. Are you afraid of Maru? I think Maru is the only player that doesn't know that I'm in a good uh, momentum right now. 
Okay, so I'm back. So he mentioned how he's never beaten Maro in, in a big series before in this in this interview. Um, so th this is either between or right before the Atlanta Winter, totally before the Atlanta uh, Winter Masters. Uh, which is a huge premiere event, obviously, one of the big three or four ESL, IEM uh, 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 events, tournaments with the trophies and everything. And so, not only this. Whoops. Uh oh. Sorry about that. So, not only uh, does uh, Hero go on to win this series pretty dominantly after he's dominated this whole tournament. But he'll shortly thereafter this will uh any last word to each other. Hold on one sec, guys. We'll uh, go on to beat Maro in the semifinals that I already uh did commentary for. The semifinals of the twenty twenty two Atlanta winner uh ESL's uh winter masters. So this is a big deal. After apparently not Having beat uh, Maru in the past, which I did n not really know was the case. Alright, here comes the hype. All right, so once we get started, we'll see how we'll divide it up. Okay, so here's the here's the history of of these two. I'll let you watch this. So yeah, they both had to overcome obstacles, but Hero Coming back from the military and winning as a Protoss in Korea, which hasn't literally happened in five years since before this. Both huge accomplishments. And so while Mara has the biggest fan base because he's the star, but he's lovable and he deserves it, there's a lot of people cheering for Hero in this match because everyone wanted a Protoss win after so long. So, I'm just gonna warn you guys now that the first match is totally bonkers because they immediately go after each other with pure infantry rushes at one another, which is what they call a high-low game. Looks like a low-skill game, but it's actually a high-skill game, because in the low-skill games between players who are far uh, inferior to this, uh, it will look like this, where it's a bunch of marines versus a bunch of stalkers. But they just both wanted to just brawl in the first round, which is just fantastic. So 
So I think what we'll do... Yeah, spoiler alert, this is not where Mari gets his G5L as the first one ever to win five GSLs, but the very next one, in 2022 Season 3 GSLs, he will win, and then the one at the beginning of this year in 2023, which is the first and only one so far, he also won, so he got the five, and then he got the six, so Mara is definitely on his way back, and... There's some reasons that we may or may not have time for why he has trouble winning offline events outside of Korea. Um, they have nothing to do with him choking. <laughs> uh, it also has happened to correspond with the rise of the superior European players like Cyril and Clem and Raynor and so forth. And he got knocked out by Gumiho, who ended up going to the finals against Cyril in the Summer Masters in Sweden, which just happened. Hero, that is. Maru seems so cocky. I remember when I first watched this, having not watched a lot of Maru's. Uh, I was like, oh my god, this kid is just so huge cocky. It's such a, I'm sorry, it's hugely cocky. But it, you can see from the interview segments that we've already seen and will continue to see between uh, games and so forth, or sets as they call them, that they're just getting the hype train going. These two are definitely want to beat each other, but they definitely like and respect one another, which I personally like, especially when you can still compete at the high, uh, at the highest level. Sorry about that. That's so funny, Su, he compares him to Su, the uh, pretty legendary Korean uh, Zerg player, so who has literally been to six GSLs and lost all six, even though he's won world championships elsewhere, as opposed to Maru, who's won a million GSLs here in Korea, uh, but not in some of the non-Korean places that Su has won. But they do care about their family and their fans, and uh, whenever we get to the post uh, match of this series, when they're giving Hero's big speech. He really talks a lot about his wife and settling down and the experience he has after being in the army and so forth. It's, it's very sweet and very truthful. All right, let's see where we are. Hero versus Morrow. All right, so the game starts around 36 minutes, 37 minutes. So, remember, as we start listening, I assume to Taste Tostes, uh, Tasteless and uh, Ar Artosis, the great duo. There they are, uh, who has kept the GSLs interesting and fun this whole time. They're there. I'm going to turn them down a tiny bit. Well, for now, I'll turn them up, but during the game, I'll turn them down a bit. Uh, but they, while they're huge Maru fanboys, are huge hero fans. Even going back, if you listen to the 2018-2019 hero games before he went to the military, and was really good and won some championships, but not something of this level. Um... They talk about watching all the hero games and series because they're just so fun and so interesting. Especially since I think both of these guys are Protoss players. At least one of them is. Oh, 
Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And that I think that that is part of the reason why there's a good chance it'll go long. It, it seems if right. They think it's going to go long, and they talk about how it's impossible. It won't go long. And in most Mario series, even the ones he loses, they go at least six games, if not seven. Uh, but after Hero goes up two games to uh, uh, two games to zero, Mario will win one, and then Hero dominates the final two. It wins four to one, but it's still epic and so fun. All right, so we'll we'll turn them down a tiny bit. Right, for, he would be the first Protoss champion in five years. And the first GSL he's ever been in. This is Mario's seventh GSL. It would be his fifth win. Uh, and like I said, he's had his fifth and sixth win in the last two since this. Uh, but he would not for this one. Also, he would be the first GSL champion who is third in his 30s. Uh, Hero is either 30 or 31. Coming back from the military, no one's done it before. A lot of them are trying to TY and stats and tons of classics from four five six seven years ago um are coming out from the military but to accomplish so much last year like hero is just unheard of all right we're getting close to in, in game here so i'm gonna try and not do super high volume uh I got to take this screenshot, sorry. Look at look at Hero meditating. I did a whole video about how Hero's like a jazz musician or a uh, improvisational dancer or any uh, cr crazy artistic virtuosic uh, genius. Uh, and the calmness and the meditation, you can just tell he's going to win this thing. And I think Mara knows too, but it doesn't mean... He's not going to do his thing. This shows their uh, gaming victories uh, up until this point. in this tournament i'm gonna mostly leave my image off i think or at least i would like to make it smaller because there's just so much greatness going on so here they are in front of their computers lg probably curved super mega hd screen but their own keyboards and their own mouse and uh the gsl it, it seems kind of grandiose to call it the Global StarCraft League being based in Japan, but there are North Americans and Europeans and other Asians who play in it, um, or, or spin-offs of it, from Sarah to Rainer. Australia is currently playing for Season 2, um, uh, so you will get that. But for the Koreans, this is the bee's knees. Here they are. All right, let me pause this for a sec. So we're going to do a quick stop here, and then we will be back shortly.